And when I asked her why, she said, well, every morning you wake up and you're the first person you have to look at in the mirror and you have to like yourself. I can teach you how to be good at this job. I can't teach you how to like yourself. Dumbo did not need a feather to fly. It reminded him that he could. Hey everyone, it is Angie Rakowski, the New York Times bestselling author of Spark, Bet on You, and Leading from the Front. I learned how to lead courtesy of the United States Marine Corps, and wow, what a great confidence building experience. And that is really the spirit of this season four, Bet on You, is how to develop the three C's of risk-taking, clarity, confidence, and courage. Our guest today is Lisa Sun, and she is the author of a new book coming out called Gravitas. I love that word. Think about that for a second. When somebody has gravitas, what does that mean to you? Because to me, it means they walk into a room and they just own it. Not just from a visual impact perspective, but you can see just the confidence exuding from that. And when you connect with this person, they make you feel good too. Don't you want that? I know I want that. I want more of that. And it's probably most because I want to feel when I go into a room that I can own that room. And man, I want people who connect with me and engage with me to feel special. And that is a skill actually that we can all develop. And that's really the heart of Lisa's work. She is a CEO of an organization that is certainly an apparel line. Like she's a fashion designer. She helps women especially look beautiful from the inside out. And that really is confidence building. How do I work on the inner side of me so I can exude confidence from the, not just the visual impact, but I can just, again, really feel like I own the space that I'm in. And on your confidence building journey, on your risk-taking journey, this is a skill too important to ignore because whether you think you can or you can't, you're right, your mindset plays such a critical role in the goals you seek and how you experience your success and how you even achieve those goals too. So without further ado, let's bring Lisa into the conversation because it is going to be awesome. She is such a wonderful, delightful leader who's gonna give us such great insight into how we can build confidence and demonstrate gravity. I am so excited for our guest, Lisa. As I've been bragging about her in the introduction, she is going to teach us all how to have gravitas. Just say that word out loud. Doesn't it sound so good? Doesn't it sound like a quality we all wanna have? Lisa, welcome to the program. And before we jump into building gravitas, which is in ourselves, I wanna hear about your story because I'm so impressed by your background, how you got to the space you are today. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm, I'm a longtime fan of yours. I think during our prep, I was saying I devoured your book in 2017. So thank you for having me on. Uh, the three parts of my story that I usually share is the first, I'm the daughter of immigrants from Kaohsiung, Taiwan. My parents came to the U.S. in the 70s, college educated, but my mom worked on a hamburger truck and my dad worked on a loading dock in Southern California. I ended up owning multiple small businesses, a Mongolian barbecue, four ninety five at lunch, twelve ninety five at dinner, all you can eat. I worked there every summer. <laughs> and I always say I'm blessed to have grown up in the company of entrepreneurs, right? This is the ability to create something from nothing. I do think immigrants are visionaries because they can believe in something before they see it. Uh, part of that I was raised by a tiger mom. I, you know, when Amy Chua's book came out, she was like, you see, I was right. Someone write a book about me. She was a tiger mom before tiger moms were a thing. So I did, um, I did start high school at the age of 12, if you can believe it. And yes, my, my mama's son has no, uh, there's no limitations to what she thinks is possible. So she will go advocate for her kids skipping grades. And what was really great is my father uh, decided when I was uh, in, at 12 years old that, you know, we couldn't afford an Ivy League education. So he enrolled me in Toastmasters and I paid for my college education through speaking competitions, the Rotary Club, the Lions Club. <laughs> and yeah, isn't that crazy? What a, what a, like a gift that every professional freezes 
when they're asked to public speak. This is something that you were developing expertise at at a very young age. At 12 I, years old. But it's, you know, it's not in Asian culture to stand on a stage and speak up. And so my parents realized as one of the few Asian families in this tiny desert town that I grew up in, that I would have to operate in Western society. And I got Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence Others, when I joined Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way I started my life. And I, I feel really grateful. Uh, it's very full circle mm -hmm. when I talk about my current. Uh, the second part of my story is I was at McKinsey & Company, the management consulting firm. Great business. Uh, Amazing. For 11 years. 11 thank goodness for these asian genetics because 11 years is a long time most people stay 24 months especially a consultancy where they really run their young associates hard so yeah, yeah. and 11 years many people don't make it past two uh, mm -hmm. and i learned client service apprenticeship mentorship and after 11 years i was burnt out i took a year off i took a year-long sabbatical and mm -hmm. the third part of my story is i was on this year off, spending time with my parents and my mom at the dinner table said, you go bet on yourself. That's why I love the name of your podcast, by the way. That's literally what she said. You bet on yourself. You take life savings and start company. And so she Mama convinced son, me. What great guidance. I mean, she was, I know. Should yeah. we invite her on next time? Should we, we should invite her invited. on to stream yard yeah, next time? That was such great guidance. I mean. <sighs> Uh, and I started my own company in 2013, which uh, Gravitas mm -hmm. is on a mission to catalyze confidence for women. And I love, again, that word Gravitas. Can you talk about how you were introduced to this? Because I think this is such a fascinating story um, regarding feedback you got at such an early stage in your career. Well, when I was 22 years old, I had been a business analyst at McKinsey for a year and I had my annual review. Mm -hmm. The opening line of the review was Lisa comes across as young and overly enthusiastic at times, she should seek to have more gravitas. I didn't know what the word meant, by the way. I had to go L-I-U, look it up, and it said dignity, importance, depth of substance. Now, just picture a 22-year-old. Mm -hmm. I definitely didn't have gravitas. And feedback is a gift, right? It's not a stick of dynamite. It's a gift. So I had the courage to say to my boss, how do I get gravitas? And she said, go buy a new dress, wear big jewelry and great shoes which is very offensive. I was making $43,000 a year. I was a size 18, 20, and she just told me to buy new clothes. And when I asked her why, she said, well, every morning you wake up and you're the first person you have to look at in the mirror and you have to like yourself. I can teach you how to be good at this job. I can't teach you how to like yourself. Dumbo did not need a feather to fly. It reminded him that he could. And so I love this idea that as adults, we have to remind ourselves to believe in ourselves and we need things that trigger that in us. So the company really was founded on this idea of how do we use apparel? How do we use content? How do we use different mechanisms in our life to catalyze confidence? I want to ask everybody who's listening to this today, when you look in the mirror, the first thing in this morning, what do you think? And what a powerful lesson that you were taught at such a stage, like, I can't teach you how to do that. That is the internal work that you have to do on yourself. And I'm just excited because as you've shared with us and you're going to share more about it, we can learn these skills to learn how to like ourselves and through the process of it all, build our confidence. And I know with your lifestyle brand and your apparel that you promote through your work, um, our external appearance does have an internal impact on us. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because you've been inspiring confidence in women just by helping them show up physically or visually so they can. Yeah, well, you know, I love that you you said that. And the, uh, before I before I get to how clothing interacts with it, I do want to give you the analogy I use. Uh, we're born fully self-confident. Ask any five-year-old what they're the best at in the world, and they'll tell you right away, I'm the best at soccer, I'm the best at hugs, I'm the best at everything. And then in our adolescence, we start to become self-aware. Self -aware. We start to doubt ourselves. We experience setbacks, disappointments. We start to look in the mirror for the flaws. You know, I always say, when you look in the mirror, do you look for the wrinkles or your sparkly eyes? And it's not our fault that as adults, we've been conditioned to focus on our deficits rather than our potential. And what I learned in running a fashion company is every woman comes into a dressing room with me with self-loathing. It's actually an analogy for the deficit mindset. She comes in 
with everything she hates about herself. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I hate my arms. I hate my legs. And I always say, can we pause for 10 minutes before we do this fitting? Because you've set yourself up to fail. You've brought in a mindset that this is not going to work. I'm a dress whisperer. I get it right on the first time. So you have to believe I find something that fits you versus you fitting into it, right? How many times do you try and close and you blame yourself? Blame the product, right? There, there's, there, don't blame yourself. And so for 10 minutes Actually, in a dress That whisper, is a yeah. great statement. Blame <laughs> the products, don't blame you. It's not you, yeah. it's the product. There's going to be something that fits you. That is like mindset shift, yeah. Yeah, no, and and, you know, I, you know, I think there's real like structural barriers to us feeling good about ourselves in a dressing. I don't allow mirrors inside a dressing room because as soon as you see yourself half undressed, you don't feel like trying on clothes. So there's all these little triggers that we've thought about. But for 10 minutes, I ask her, what are you the most proud of in the last six months? Tell me what you're the best at in the world. Tell me some of your accomplishments. And she starts to smile and she starts to relax. And then I do the fitting and, and the mirrors are on the outside. She goes, this is a skinny mirror. I'm like, nope, it's from Bed Bath & Beyond. Rest in peace, Bed Bath & Beyond. But Bed Bath & Beyond, it's 1995. We can't afford the skinny mirrors. And she goes, what did you do? And I said, if you're taking on every day, bringing in all this baggage of negativity, no wonder it's hard to break outside of your comfort zone. No wonder it's hard. And so for me, we've been taught in society that confidence is a behavior. Stand on a stage, be assertive, speak up it actually starts with a choice and a mindset, right? You've got to choose, because you're not five years old anymore, to break out of this, to sit in the midst of all your setbacks and still hold yourself in high regard. And then it's a mindset of how do you talk about yourself to yourself? How do you affirm and take inventory of your own strengths? And that's really where fashion plays into it. I make a great product, size zero to 26W, right? But it's not the product. It, genuinely, it's not the product. The product is simply a reminder of how good you should feel on the inside first. Oh, genius. And I think that is so important, just recognizing that confidence is built from the inside out. So I love that. Again, it's really about doing the inner work and then having the outer appearance, you should say visual impact, be a statement about the inner work or the the best product from the inner work. How do you do the inner work? So you do it like really quickly with folks, you give them these mindsets, which help can in the moment, but how do you build the strategies that over time are gonna produce gravitas? Yeah, and by the way, this is why I'm so excited to talk to you. I really feel like we share similar values, like mm -hmm. having been in the midst of a lot of your work, it is, this is why I think, you know, no Instagram post is going to make you feel good about yourself, right? Right. Because oh, no, I'm no, no, I'm just saying feel bad about myself. Yeah. No, no I'm just saying self love is an immense amount of work, and I don't yeah. think that we as a society really play out how much hard, how hard it is to like yourself. And so, in my new book, we actually have come up with three strategies to do this. Uh, one is you have to be able to articulate your strengths. And I call it a confidence language. We have a quiz in my new book where you, you do? take a quiz. Yeah, there's a quiz. Good. So we did a quantitative and qualitative study on confidence in America. It took three years. It was wow. 32 focus groups, thousand person quantitative study. And we identified eight types of confidence. Most mm -hmm. people have two or three. My mom has all eight, by the way. She took the quiz. She's like, I want to meet this I'm mama son. I know these things. Uh, and 2% of our data set actually had all eight. But, you know, I found it really interesting that people can't pay themselves a compliment. They can't tell me what they're the best at in the world. By the way, there's no way to measure it. It's in your head. Mm -hmm. And so the first step is being able to articulate your superpowers, not from a performative standpoint. Oh, I'm really good at getting things done. But I am the best at giving, at achieving, at knowing, you know, we created eight types of confidence so that you can discover that. And I think once you make the unconscious conscious, you can't unsee it. I've had so many women take the quiz and go, oh my goodness, I'm more powerful than I thought. I thought I'd have two or three. I have five. Am I under leveraging myself? Am and you're I like, not yes. myself credit? Yes. Yes, you are. And people's just eyes open and they go, wow, I am not advocating for myself. So I think Part one, you've really got to know what you bring to the table. What gas do you have in the tank? 
Part two, though, and I think this is really where a lot of hard work, by the way, that is not minimizing that work because I do think you have to be able to advocate for your talents, right? Even when society or your workplace or your spouse doesn't see them, right? Sometimes we actually have to change the scorecards to see us. Uh, but then the second part is we took 30 situations in life mm-hmm. and we correlated which of these eight do you need to win in that situation. Oh, cool. So asking for a raise and asking for a promotion are two different superpowers and people tend to try to use the same one. And so we say, if you don't have one of the eight superpowers for something you want in life, how do you build it? So as women climb the ladder or get older, they go from having two superpowers to four or more. So we know there's mastery and progression. And I think this is really important because we're told to be more confident. It's an ambiguous umbrella term. This is saying, I want to start my own business, or I want to be able to tell a story on a stage. Which of these eight do I need? And do I already have it, or do I need to cultivate it? And I think that's where we start to feel strong. Things don't get easier. We get stronger. So that's the second part. And then the third part is we have to start seeing other people in our lives from a strengths-based point of view, right? If we want to see our, be seen that way too, we need to start validating what we see in other people. And so we've created this whole approach for, I already know, Angie, you probably have all eight. I'm going to say, you're going to take the quiz. And you'll be like, Lisa, I did have all eight. But- well, I'm glad that that shows up, but it's all <laughs> at the same time. Like, you know, I'm, as, I'm, as you're going through this, and by the way, I want to talk more in a second about this last piece because you making others feel special is them like, crowning you with the gravitas crown. Like, again, like I can feel it. And if you can see it, and if I can make you feel that it's like the gifts that we can give other people is tremendous. But it's, but it's funny though. Like I'm I'm thinking about times in my life where I believed in the potential of people around me and I did not believe in the potential within myself. And it's just kind of amazing. It's like, I can see around me, all these incredible people who have so many skills and gifts to offer this world. I'm going to nurture and I'm going to encourage them. But turn the mirror on yourself. You're like, uh, I got nothing. Uh, no big deal. And it's both, right? Both pieces are the part of the answer. And uh, the last chapter of my book, the one, it was funny when I recorded the audio book and it's three days long of recording, mm-hmm. the engineer said, wow, I've never seen someone get to chapter eight, the last chapter and have this much energy. And I said, this is my favorite chapter. I mean, I love the whole book, but it's called The Sisterhood of Gravitas. And what it is is, we have to show up for ourselves and then we have to lift up people around us and not compete with them, right? And I said, that's actually when we're going to see massive change more globally, not just for ourselves, but for society. And so you nailed it. it. It's both parts of the equation. And most of us aren't doing the inner reflection piece. We can see it in other people, but we can't take a moment to do it for ourselves. What practices, Lisa, do you demonstrate kind of on a consistent basis to boost yourself up? Because I'm sure you, you know, people would love to say, oh, Lisa's always like this. She's always bubbly. She's always exuding confidence, but you said it yourself. It's, it's a work, right? It's a work in progress. So what do you do to sort of self-manage yourself or get yourself? I will that? give you my quickest hack and it's actually right here. So I can oh, show it see. to you. And I, every person on my team, and I, there's like a couple of desks here. Everyone has a picture of themselves between the ages of five and 10 on their deck. That's um, actually something I'm really committed to because I really don't like those Facebook ones of like, if you could go back in time and tell your younger self something, I always say, ask your nine-year-old self what they would do. Because my nine-year-old self wanted to be president of the United States, the first Asian female chief justice in the Supreme Court, and she's still in me, right? And so your nine-year-old self has a very positive view of who you are. I think if you went back in time and asked Lisa at nine, tell me about Lisa. She would say, oh my gosh, she is an amazing leader. She can create things. She's resourceful. She gets things done, right? The way in which my nine-year-old self would describe me to me is so incredible. And so that's like the quick hack is every person on my team has a photo of themselves as a child. Although my head designer chose something different. It's quite funny. He's from Mongolia and he chose a photo of his first day in the United States when he came in his 20s. And he said, that guy knew he was going to be a fashion designer. That guy knew that he was going to, and it's a photo of him in front of 
the garment district statue of a garment district worker. And he has like spiky hair. And you could clearly tell he's just come over from Mongolia. And he said, <laughs> I laugh when I see this photo, but that person was so ambitious. They knew what they wanted. And so I never want to forget that that's where I started. That is such a great <laughs> idea. And so if you're listening and you're hearing these great ideas that Lisa's talking about to help you think and reflect and develop your self-care and self-compassion and build your gravitas and confidence, start by doing that strengths inventory. Well, first, start by, start by getting your book, which is going to be out on September 12th, 2023. <laughs> Cannot wait for you. It's going to be a masterpiece and a massive success. You've heard it here. But, you know, So start doing that strengths inventory, buy the book, and then think about promoting and lifting up. Because here's something that really surprised me, Lisa. Whenever I do, I have a soft power series. So it's a women's leadership monthly event that I, you know, free open to the public. And so really about skills to help women leaders build their leadership skills. I always hear that women are our worst critics. And I'm like, who are these women you're with? But I know that's probably why you wrote the eighth chapter. Can you tell us a little bit about how we yes. can better support other women on their confidence yes. building communities? For sure, for sure. Or oh, by the way, and um, also we're we're just uh, and your listeners will get it first. If you go to myconfidencelanguage.com, you can take the quiz for free. So you'll that's be awesome. able to actually get your inventory of your strengths for free without having to buy. Them. I want everyone to buy the book, but I also was like, oh, we should just give this away too. Uh, so uh, one thing that I like to say is the inner critic never goes away for good. And that's just true. That little voice in your head that tells you you can't do something that's cultivated in middle school, in our adolescence, it never goes away. And I think one of the mistakes we make is we try to wave it away. Oh, no, no, no. Like your boss saying, I wouldn't have given that to you if I didn't believe in you. Why don't you believe in yourself, right? We kind of wave away that inner critic. We don't give it a, a chance to voice itself. My approach is name your inner critic. Give your inner critic name. My Mine's name is Fred. By the way, I won't give you the origin story of Fred. But just naming it takes away its power a little bit. I've had women in workshops name it something funny that they can laugh at. And then I do worst case, best case, most likely case. And I'll say, okay, Fred, what do you think? Let out all your fears. Okay. Say everything that the inner critic wants to say. And you realize that voice is harsh, backward looking, pessimistic. And then I look at my superpowers and I go, okay, Lisa, from a place of strength, what do you think is the best case scenario? Guess what? The most likely is closer to the best case scenario than the worst case scenario every single time and we waste so much energy worrying about things and i always say go ahead inner I, I do this all the time i'm like fred go ahead tell me why i can't do this and just talk and then i go my superpowers are creating performing and leading and giving i'm like i can make things happen i can lead people into battle i can absolutely advocate for myself on a stage and i give with warmth and collaboration and i go okay so the most likely scenario here is i'm going to win in this scenario. But you do have to let the inner critic out. And sometimes it's helpful to have, I call it a shame buddy. Like you <laughs> have a best friend that has no judgment. I'm sure you do, right? And oh, you're just like, yes. <laughs> you just say, okay, I'm just going to let Fred talk. Okay. I'm going to just say all the things out loud. And my, my shame buddy is Jane Park, who's also an entrepreneur. And Jane will say, great. I'm glad Fred got a, a chance to talk. Now tell me what Lisa thinks. And I'll say, okay, this is what we, and she goes, okay, so where are we going to land on this? Sometimes it helps to have that person who goes, I see you and I see how strong you are, but I don't want to ignore the fact that you need to unleash all those fears. Go ahead. I, I'm here for it. And I think too, sometimes the process of articulating and then you'll listen to it, you know, go processing from your mind verbally or writing it down. You're like, oh, that's not so bad. You know, as long That's as you're so not bad. catastrophizing it, right? Like I'm sure Fred isn't yeah. catastrophizing. He's bringing some reality to the situation. And you're like, okay, that is not so bad. I will okay, tell so you we... where I borrowed that from, by the way. And yeah, it's like, did do. you ever see the TV show, This Is Us? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I don't, Beth and Randall TV. Pearson, they do worst case scenario on the show. So they'll say something like, our kid's coming home from college and has something to tell us. What is she going to tell us? Like, go, inner critic. And they'll say, worst case scenario, she's pregnant. We have to raise the kid. She's moving back in. She's dropped out of school. You know. And then they go, okay, we have a big house. She could move back in. We've raised kids before. We know how to do it. If she needs us to help with the grandbaby. We, you know, it's so funny that they do that intuitively. And that's why they're such a strong pairing on that show. 
Oh, exactly. It's like I'm a war gaming, right? The the worst case scenario. You're like, okay, we got this. It isn't the worst. Got- Everybody's going to be fine. We are going to be fine. Lisa, I am just in love with your work. And just a reminder, though, to people who are listening to the podcast today, you will spend probably $1,000 to take your child on a baseball tournament or a soccer tournament. You can spend $24.95 or whatever the price is on a book that is going to help you build a critical skill that takes you from where you are to where you want to be. So final question, where can we learn more about you, Lisa? Well, you can find us at gravitasnewyork.com. And that's mm-hmm. also our Instagram handle. You can find me at Lisa L. Sun uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, on social media. And the book is available wherever books are sold. I love that. Well, thank you so much for this conversation. I know this won't be the last time we talk. I want to get outfitted by Gravitas. Don't we all? I mean, go to the website, check out the beautiful apparel there and your lifestyle brand. So thank you for so much for being a guest on Bet On You. Thank you for having me. So I don't know about you, but I'm leaving this conversation just on a high. She wrote the book on Gravitas and you felt it too, right? During this conversation, don't you just feel more inspired, more hopeful, more connected to your aspirations simply by having just someone share simple guidance with you on how you can feel this way when you commit yourself to the disciplines of building confidence. The three takeaways I got from the session are first and foremost is to go back to that five to nine-year-old me, the one who was much more braver that I would say that I even am today because she didn't believe in limits. I wonder what that five to nine-year-old person would say to me today, and I just need to listen. I need to have a visual reminder of that girl, and I really hope I'm living up to her expectations. What a great way to think about how we can be accountable to our dreams and our potential. The second thing I took away from that was let's give our inner critic, like rather than ignore it, let's give it a name. And maybe a silly name, maybe a dumb name. I don't know what that would be. But like Fred, give our inner critic and just listen to them and play out their scenario and then give ourselves a seat at the table. Play out that scenario too, which is what great guidance. The final thing that I want to say, which I think is going to really be helpful for us, is really thinking about the skills that we can build every single day. So if you have that moment of self-doubt, or that moment of insecurity. Give yourself that internal pep talk. Remind yourself of your superpowers. Remind yourself of your strengths and really build from there. We do not spend time in moments of a self-appreciation. We spend, we, we spend plenty of time in moments of self-doubt, but what about self-appreciation? Go there first. Thank you everyone for just allowing me to lead these conversations to help us all get clear get confidence and get courageous in our daily life. If you want to stay more engaged, please visit angieconnect.com where you can learn all about how we can find ways to reconnect with each other off the podcast, maybe on social media, maybe a future events. Just know that I'm here to be a resource for you as you continue to bet on you. 